Hey, it's Warren with Valcom, and today I'm sitting here with Dan Smith, National Sales Manager, and we want to talk a little bit about our VIP 201A. Um, Dan, give us a, uh, an outline of what the capabilities of this device are. Well, the VIP 201A is a SIP translator. And what I mean by that is a uh, SIP call is meant to be a one-to-one -one relationship. One phone to another phone, for example. A lot of times in paging, we want to go one to many. So we want to go one phone to many speakers, for example. And that's what the VIP 201A does. It does that translation from the one to one SIP call to a one to many in the Valcom protocol. Gotcha. What, can you give us an example of where that might be implemented? Sure. An example would be, let's say you had a facility where you had uh, some IP endpoints kind of sprinkled around. Maybe on your back door or loading dock, you've got one of our IP intercoms, mm -hmm. the buzz in the UPS guy. Um, maybe you have a analog gateway going to an old fashioned 25 volt amplifier. Uh, maybe you have some Valcom IP horns out in your warehouse area. Any of those devices can be registered back to your telephone system via SIP but it is that one-to-one -one relationship. So from a phone, I can only dial that individual station. It might make sense for that intercom. You know, guy, the inter uh, guy walks up, presses the uh, button, it rings into my telephone, I can talk to him, buzz him in. But if I want to do a group page, and I want to page that entire facility with audio, that one-to-one -one relationship doesn't work anymore. I need that one-to-many. And that's what the VIP 201A does. It takes that one-to-one -one SIP call it turns it into a one-to-many broadcast in the Valcom protocol. Gotcha. How do you register this device to a SIP phone system? Well, uh, the device has the ability to register back in station mode to up to eight SIP identities. Okay. And in trunk mode, you can register up to 99 SIP identities. Whew. How about what, what type of telephone system would you need to register this really any IP telephone system nowadays is going to speak SIP. It's a common protocol. It's been accepted by virtually every manufacturer. So uh, we would be able to register to again virtually any IP telephone system. Cool. What about uh, any additional features? What what else does it do besides the the SIP one to many relationship? Oh, uh, that's the primary thing that it does. But it does have some. Uh, interesting features, one of which is uh, called Night Ring. So any of those SIP identities that we talked about can be registered as Night Ring and that would be used for like a factory uh, scenario where you may have a telephone that's ringing but the employees aren't near it. They're out uh, working in the factory. When the telephone rings they may not be able to hear that. We can associate our SIP identities to that same extension and have that ringing come out over the speakers or horns in the warehouse or factory area. They'll hear the ringing, they can go over and answer the phone just like they normally would. Gotcha. There's also a uh, really nice feature called Store and Forward. Uh, you can select Store and Forward again on any of those SIP identities and what that does is it will actually record all the audio until the person hangs up the phone and then the audio will be played back. And that's important in like feedback situations where you may have a speaker or a horn in close proximity to the phone that's doing the paging. You can get that kind of irritating squeal. Well, the uh, store forward function completely eliminates that as a possibility. So again, built-in uh, functionality, no, no additional charge. I noticed there's some additional inputs on the back. Mm -hmm. Tell me, uh, tell me a little bit about that and what that's all about. Well, we've, we've got a couple of things here. Uh, we do have a 24 volt DC power connection. You don't have to use that. The unit is power over ethernet capable. So if you have power over ethernet uh, network switches, you can just plug that into a standard PoE jack. No PoE plus required. Good. If you don't have PoE, you can plug that into a standard ethernet port and locally power it on the 24 volt DC connection. Gotcha. We have on the back, we have an audio output. That audio output is just a standard analog audio output. You know, you can take that to a zone of Valcom one-way self-amplified speakers, for example, or you could even take that to an auxiliary input on an old-fashioned central amplified system. 
that analog output can be associated with any of those groups of IP endpoints that we talked about. So it's just really an added benefit gotcha. of, of the device. We have background music or auxiliary input on the back here, and that can be used for any line level audio source. We're not going to stream that over your network. It's just really going to be looped to that analog output that we talked about. Okay. So I know we also produce a VIP 204A. What's yeah. the difference between the 201 and the 204? Uh, virtually identical. So all the features that we talked about, the, the one-to-many SIP translator, the eight SIP identities in station mode or 99 in trunk mode, uh, the store and forward capability, the night ring capability, all the same. The only difference is that the VIP 201A has a single analog output on the back. The VIP 204A has four analog outputs on the back. Again, really independent of the main functionality of this unit. It's that SIP translation that is the, gotcha. uh, the main purpose. Well, fantastic. Thanks for taking some time to tell us about the VIP 201A, and we will see you for our next product spotlight soon.